today on Dr. Phil, a suspicious online romance. What makes you think this guy is a phony? Three years. Where is he? He moved to Ghana. Did that cause you to wonder? If she's been hooked by a catfish. My mother has been scammed over $300,000. It's the biggest catch yet. You sent him a Mercedes, a Jaguar. And my bedroom furniture. He's driving a Mercedes and you can't pay rent. Remember Leanne? She was engaged to a man who she had never met. In my heart, do I believe Terry is real? Absolutely. Terry even sent her a $500 engagement ring. Leanne sent him $3,200 in return. Here's Dawn, whose online romance started with love letters. I send the money to David. It goes to somebody else that lives in Turkey, and then he gets the money from them. I love David, and I want to be with David. Dawn was so smitten, she sent David $30,000. Sandy gave her heart to a man she had neither met nor spoken to. I've sent cash to Max in cereal boxes. I take the money and put it in the bag. I've gotten quite good at it. Well, that's $63,000 that she'll never see again. Gilda was swept off her feet by her online boyfriend. I love him, and I think he's real. She sold her home and sent $200,000 overseas. Sabrina signed up for a dating website to find love. I consider James to be my boyfriend. I am in love with James, and I believe James Connor loves me too. She sent him a staggering $265,000. When Joy came to the show, she was planning her wedding. This is the dress. This is the dress I'm getting married in. Well, Joy is still waiting at the altar. Thankfully, she only sent him about $50,000. All of these women sent money to men they had never met. The combined grand total is a mind-blowing $605,077. That's over half a million dollars from just six women. Now let's talk about Norma because Norma says she's watched every one of these catfish shows, but wants to tell me that she is the exception to the rule, because after I finish investigating this, I will see that her love is real. Let me tell you, I so hope she is right. I truly do, because the stakes in this story are higher than any story we've done. I'll tell you why. This precious woman is 70 years old. Now, Norma sent overseas luxury cars, such as a Mercedes-Benz GLK 350, a Jaguar XF. She sent all of her furniture, all of it. And you guessed it, tons of money. All to a man who calls himself Richard Randall. Let's meet the woman that believes her online love is real and ready to walk her down the aisle. I met Richard Randall two years ago on a dating site. He's all I've ever wanted. He's the man of my dreams. Richard was an engineer, and he lived in Salisbury, North Carolina. He has short, blonde, sandy hair and blue eyes. I thought he was very attractive in his photos. I have stared at his picture for hours. Every day, we would email each other. He calls me baby, and he calls me darling. I love you more than anything. He says, you're the love of my life. He asked me to marry him, and I said yes. He calls me Mrs. Richard Randall. I'm waiting for him to come home to be with me. Well, Norma has never even laid eyes on Richard Randall. Never even seen him, just the pictures. But that has not stopped her from sending money to this man that she has never met. About six months after I met Richard, he asked me for $2,000. I don't have a lot of money. I'm not rich. About a year after I met Richard, he had to go to Ghana, Africa. When I send money, it always goes to Ghana, and it is picked up by one of his friends. I've sent him money 
hundred times. He just needed money for jewelry, to pay loans back, tariff, plane tickets. He's been in jail. And his boats sank. I have probably spent Richard about two hundred thousand dollars in all. I sold my engagement ring and my husband's wedding band to get money to send to Richard. He's planned on coming home about four or five times and never works out. I sent everything I had to Richard. And he has told me several times that he's going to pay me back. I'm certain he's real. Well, Norma, I am really glad to meet you. All right, well, you sent me a question, and I actually wrote down the question. Here was the question that I got from Norma. Dr. Phil, can you help me prove to my daughter, along with everyone else, that Richard is indeed real and that he and I have a real connection, are in love, and have a future together. Well, maybe so. Maybe I can. Um, you were married for a good while, right? Yes, I was, 25 years. And your husband passed. Yes, he had cancer. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. I, I truly am. And sometime after he passed, you decided to get on a, a website to meet right. someone, right? right? And what website did you get on? Christian Mingle. You actually made contact with Richard on Valentine's Day? Right. Yeah, he was looking for someone to love him, and I was wanting someone to love me, and so yeah. we just fell, fell in love with each other. You kind of fell pretty hard, right? Yeah, I mean, sure you, you wouldn't even leave your apartment for fear you might miss a call. You're right. I yeah. never loved another man like I loved him. E even your husband? Ne no. Even though you'd never met him? But our hearts just seemed like they just mingled, you know, just melded together. Right. Now, Norma may want me to prove that Richard Randall is real, but her daughter, Tammy, well, she's far from convinced. When Richard Randall entered my mother's life, she became someone totally different. She became consumed, obsessed, almost like an addict. He calls her Mrs. Richard Randall. He will tell her, I love you so much. God has put us together. He really baits her with God. My mother truly believes to this day that Richard Randall is coming to marry her. I want her to realize that there is no Richard Randall. He didn't love her, he loved her money. My mother has been scammed of every single thing that she had in the bank. I'm angry, I'm mad at her, I'm mad at him. I haven't had a mother, and my children haven't had a grandmother for three years because he has consumed her. It makes me sick. If I could get a hold of this Richard Randall, I would wring his neck and probably spit in his face. He has ruined my mother's life. Well, Tammy, what makes you think that this guy is a phony? Where is he? <laughs> Three years. Where is he? How do you answer that question? Where is he? I don't know. I just keep waiting and hoping. I've got my bags packed. <laughs> she said you've been sending him money. Yeah. In fact, you, you sent him uh, money once. The first time, Joel Olstein's book, Become a Better You, you took $2,000 cash and you'd put you know, a little here and a little here and a little here. Then you sent him this book. Did he get it? No. Somebody else got, it went to the wrong address and somebody else had kept the money out and left the book. Left the book? Did he get the book? Yeah, he got the book. He got he the book? He said he enjoyed reading it. Yeah, I, I would too. If about every money. third page there was a hundred dollars. <laughs> he didn't get the money. If it went to the wrong address, how did he get the book? And one of the neighbor's houses is on the porch with the money gone. Norma's love affair with Richard Randall actually caught the attention of law enforcement. We're going to get into that when we come back. Norma did get in trouble. Norma's bank account was flagged for money laundering. I was nearly arrested. And later, look, why don't we give him a call and give him a chance to explain all this? 
I'm guessing he's in speed dial. Norma did get in trouble and was banned from Western Union and MoneyGram. The police told each of those five places, do not allow her to send any more money overseas. It is a scam. Also, Norma's bank account was flagged for money laundering. For some reason, my mother had given Richard her bank account number. Richard had asked me for my account number. He said he had a friend that was going to put some money in it so I could get it out and send it to him. The sheriff's department were like, here we go again. I was nearly arrested for money laundering. Now, imagine the police raiding an old folks' home. But that is what Tammy says happened to her mother when she tried to send more money to a man that she never met. Now, you've sent a fair amount of money I, to this I man. Have. Correct? And I don't know that you even know, Tammy, just how far this has gone. OK, in September of 2011, your husband passes, correct? Right. All right. And then in February of 12, this is five months later, you go on Christian Mingle. Right. And on Valentine's Day, that's when you meet, meet Richard Randall, right? So during 2012, you did send him money for a computer. You sent some cash, wire transfers. You even sent some money to friends and you paid some taxes for him, right? Right. For a total of $118,183.99. I did not know it was that much. But it didn't stop there. This continued on, Tammy. She sent him furniture, cash, wire transfers, more money to friends, money to adopt a child. Y'all were going to adopt a child. You sent him a 2007 Ford Focus, a 212 Mercedes, a 2011 Jaguar, and then paid shipping for all the cars. And now we're talking about $219,329.79. We're talking about a grand total of $337,000. And now I can't even pay rent while he's driving a Mercedes and you're having to stay with relatives because you can't pay rent. You were in a retirement home? Mm -hmm. I had to move out of that because I couldn't afford the rent. My brother-in-law told me I could move in with him and he took me in or I'd be on the street. So you're living with relatives. Mm -hmm. All right, so what do we know about Richard Rand? Now, this is according to Norma. He was born and raised in Salisbury, North Carolina. No, he was raised in France. He was born and raised in France. Then he, he moved to North Carolina? Yes. And that's where he was living when you met him? Yes, when I met him, yes. Okay. Then he moved to Philadelphia. And what state do you live in? North Carolina. Reckon he'd stop by your house on the way to Philadelphia? <laughs> Well, he might have, but I had went to South Carolina to be with students some time with my son. Like the whole time? <laughs> no, not the whole You time. were both in North Carolina? Right. When you met? That's what I thought when I seen his address. I thought, well, that's not far away. A and he never came to see you? Did, did, no. I mean, like, how far away was it? Like, 100 miles? Maybe 50, 75. 50, 75 miles? I mean, I'll drive that today. He was 50 miles from you and never came to see you. Did that cause you to wonder? Yes, it did. Okay, then he moves to Philadelphia. Okay, and he's living there. Um, and then he's an engineer, right? Mm -hmm. And then he moved to Ghana, he said, because your son threatened him. Yes. So his, his thinking is, Norma, love you, girl. No, we haven't met yet. I'm moving to Ghana. Well, he didn't say that. He called me when he got to Ghana and said, guess where I am? I said, where? He says, I'm in Ghana. I said, well, didn't you forget something? He said, what? I said, me. So why hasn't Richard seen her? They're in the same state, 50 miles apart. He doesn't see her. Moves to Philadelphia, then gets there, says he's threatened by her son. So 
what any reasonable person would do, he moves to Ghana uh, on the West African coast and says, gee, forgot to take her. So why hasn't he met her? What are his reasons and excuses? I'm going to tell you after the break. I sent my bedroom furniture to Ghana along with a 2012 Mercedes Benz and a 2012 Jaguar. The Jaguar was supposed to be mine and the Mercedes Benz was going to be Richard's. It was very exciting. And later, you told him you were coming here. He says, you better buy a plane ticket and get home. Had he heard of the Dr. Phil show? I'm sure he had. Yeah, that he has too. This situation has caused a ripple effect. It has put me at odds with my father. It's caused a lot of tension between my husband and I because he doesn't understand why I want to help her when she's sinking her own ship. My mother has missed our daughter's last three birthdays. She doesn't even know my son. He's six. It hasn't just broken Norma's heart. It's broken a lot of other hearts, too. Tammy believes her 70-year-old mother, Norma, is possibly being duped by a catfish. It's a term that describes someone who pretends to be someone they're not using social media to create a false identity and pursue deceptive online romances. But Norma insists she is the exception to the rule. She is so convinced that her fiance, Richard Randall, is real, she is preparing to move to Ghana to be with him. She has her bags packed. The plan was for me to move to Ghana and live in a beach house. I helped buy the beach house. I gave about 15000 on the beach house. And I sent my bedroom furniture to Ghana along with a 2007 Ford Focus. I had also sent two luxury cars to Ghana. It was a 2012 Mercedes Benz and a 2012 Jaguar. The Jaguar was supposed to be mine and the Mercedes Benz was going to be Richard's. Counting shipping and everything, I spent about $55,000. I'd even packed my bags. I was so sure that I was going. Also, Richard found a 12-year-old girl in Ghana that we were going to adopt. I actually spoke to the girl, and she called me mom and told me she couldn't wait for us to be a family. It was very exciting. OK, so I was saying, where is this Richard Randall? I mean, two and a half years, you'd think the boy would find a way. I mean, at one point, he was in 50 miles of her. Well, he said he was too sick to fly. Uh, he was afraid of your son. Yes. He was held up at airport customs and not allowed to fly. Why, why was that? When I had him detained in Belgium. That's when you had him detained in Belgium, mm -hmm. OK? I didn't even know he was in Belgium. Yeah, well, the way he got to Belgium is he was coming to see you, right? Right. And rather than fly from West Africa, he decided to take a boat. It ran into problems and wound up sinking off the coast of Belgium. I hate it when that happens. So then he makes it ashore in Belgium. But he's arrested in Belgium, because you ratted him out as a fraud, according to him, you and, and your lawyer mm -hmm. ratted him out. So he was detained in Belgium, so he couldn't get to you. But he got loose, because he's back in Ghana now, right? Yes, uh, they didn't have enough evidence to prosecute him. And he was on the way. Why not come on to see you? I wish I knew. OK, so Tammy and Richard have had some exchanges. Richard Randall to Tammy on August 7th of 212. Tammy, listen and listen real good. I am not in the same age with you to read such foolish message from you. You know I am like a stumbling block on your path. I will straighten you well, and you will sit at your place and nurture your sorry little pathetic ass. If you ever write such a disrespectful mail again to me, 
nor your mom again, I will be your worst nightmare. Know that you will never, and I repeat, never, ever, ever stop the both of us from loving each other. So he just gave you a, a good telling off. Oh, yeah. In real Philadelphia speak. Could English be his second language? <laughs> Maybe? I mean, do you think? Okay, then Tammy talks back to him. She sends an email to him. You're finished. You're going down, you sorry piece of <laughs> You and all of your buddies sitting in that internet cafe are scum of the earth, and we're coming after you with all we have. You have conned your last person. That's pretty good English. <laughs> pretty good English on that. said a lot more. Yeah, but being a lady. Yes. Uh, so you and he.
clearly are at odds. Clearly. And can we agree that he talks funny? <laughs> I am not of your home. same age group. He can say I love you real, real well. And send money. And I need money. I need money. He's got that down, just rolls, I need money. I Let's see what happens when I try to call Richard Randall. Guessing he's in speed dial. Hello? Because of her giving Richard all of her money, my mother can no longer afford to live in the independent living facility. And she is now living with my uncle, her brother-in-law. It makes me ashamed. It makes me feel sorry for her. Now, Tammy brought her mother here in hopes that we could uncover some truths about a man who proposed marriage to Norma, even though they've never met. Um, now, does it surprise you that you would be willing to marry someone you've never met? I just think the how much I loved him, how much I wanted to be with him. Look, why don't we give him a call? Okay. Why don't we give Richard a call and give him a chance to explain all this? This is your phone. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing he's in speed dial. Of course. Just call him and put it on speaker. He might call back. He did yesterday. He did? He called you back yesterday? After when we tried to call him. Yeah. Well, um, hello? I was recording. Okay, it says it's an invalid number. So I hung up. And the other number I used to call this morning is the call rejected. He only called her 22 times yesterday from that number. You told him you were coming here? He called me in the, <clears throat> in the hotel room and he wanted to know where <clears throat> I was at. And I told him I was in Los Angeles. He said, what are you doing there? I said, I'm going to go to Dr. Phil's show. He says, you better buy a plane ticket and get home. Had he heard of the Dr. Phil show? I'm sure he had. Yeah, I bet he has, too. Um, I'm curious. We have someone on the phone that is not, th this is not Richard, but this is someone that I'm curious if his voice and accent and all is at all similar to that of Richard. Steve, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. All right, good. Uh, Steve, tell me uh, where you're from. Uh, I'm from Nigeria. You're from Nigeria. And yeah. you, you currently live where? New York City. Okay, in New York City. Okay. And Nigeria is a West African nation. It's pretty close to Ghana, right? Yes. Okay. And... Um, Tell me just a little bit about yourself so we can just hear you speak a little bit. I live in New York City, and I'm a film producer. Does this sound at all like the... A little bit. A little bit. So, Steve, would you do something for me? Sure. Would you say, I love you, dear Norma? I love you, dear Norma. Norma sounds right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Could you say, please send money? Please send some money. Sounds more like him all the time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Would you ever send money to someone you're dating online but have never met? Log on to Twitter and let us know by tweeting hashtag Dr. Phil yes or hashtag Dr. Phil no. I'd love to know what you think, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. Let me ask you something. Have you changed your relationship with your family since you got involved with, with Richard? Yes. How has she changed, Tammy? There's really no relationship anymore. My brother doesn't want to have anything to do with her or me. Your, your, brother's, just, your brother's just completely cut her off, right? You have no relationship with him? No. Does that bother you? Yes, it does. Um, you missed your nephew's funeral because you were distraught over not hearing from Richard, right? right. So something as important as a, as a family loss, 
this is bankrupting you emotionally as well as financially. Would that be accurate? That's correct. I am addicted. I've come to the conclusion that I am just addicted to him. He's my highs and he's my lows. Well, we actually found him. Did you? Right here. We found him and we're gonna talk to him next. I was very lonely when I met Richard. My husband died three years ago. Richard makes me the happiest person on earth. Okay, that was Norma who says she is counting down the days until she and her online fiance, Richard Randall, can finally be together. We found this man right here, and he taped a message for you. Let's watch it. Norma, I would like to introduce myself to you. My name is Bill. From my understanding, there is a guy named Richard from Ghana that stolen my photos from my Facebook account. And he's been sending those to you and manipulating you in a way that's not good. I just want you to know that I am not Richard. I'm not from Ghana. I've never been to Ghana. The producers also informed me that you had lost a husband that you were with for 21 years, and I'm sorry to hear that. I also can understand your situation because I was in a 21-year loving relationship with a wonderful man, and he passed away. It's just left such a huge void in my life. So with all that said, Norma, I just want to wish you the best, and I hope that you can find some peace and happiness and move forward with your life. Now, <laughs> Norma, Bill is on the phone, but what is your experience right now of seeing your Richard Randall's picture come to life and talk to you and it not have that accent, and it not be Richard Randall. I don't know. He don't seem real. He not be. I mean, he don't. I don't think it's him. <laughs> still but that's the that's the that's him, right? That's Richard yeah. Randall. That's the picture. Uh huh. But it don't really sound that much like him. That's because that's not him. <laughs> that's because that's not him. This picture you're seeing is a, a man named Bill. He has a Facebook page and that picture is on it and somebody took that picture wrote Richard Randall under it and got on a dating website and started talking to you the man that's talking to you doesn't look like that the man that looks like that is on the phone and I, I, I just want we're going to talk to him but I just want to note that Bill here is not a scammer Bill is a victim of identity theft, just like you are a victim of fraud. You two are victims in this. Bill is a, is, a, is a great guy. He has nothing to do with this. He just had his picture stolen. Bill, are you there? Yes. Hi, Dr. Phil. Norma, that is definitely me. That's my picture. It was taken from my Facebook account. And I am so sorry that this has happened to you. D do you believe what I'm telling you? Do you believe what Bill is telling you? I do. There is no Richard Randall. There, there, that's just a made-up name. You need to tell me you hear that. I hear that. That this picture that you've fallen in love with is not Richard Randall. It's a man you've never met or talked to until this minute right now on this stage. And his name is Bill. And his name is Bill. And you've never sent him a dime. He's never received a dime from you. He's never asked you for a dime. The person that you've been talking to, maybe he's from Ghana. I don't know. But he, he, we've heard his voice. He's clearly has a West African accent. Uh, he's not who he's telling you he is. Right? Right. You get that. Tell me you get that. I get that. All right. Let that soak in for a minute. Bill, thank you so much for, A, making that tape for this, this woman and for taking time to be on the phone. This means so much to get her moving forward in her life. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, another mother, Sabrina, and her daughter, Sarah, sat right here on this stage not long ago. 
they too faced the reality that Sabrina was trapped in a terrible cyber scam. We're going to hear how they're doing next and give you an update. We'll be right back. I know this is a lot. This is a lot for you to take in. It's a lot, and you can be overwhelmed. But the fact is, you are as much a victim here as if someone had broken into your house and stolen all of your things during the night. This person is not the picture that you've seen. That should tell you why he's never been able for you to see him. He told me one time he hoped I still uh, liked him as much when I saw him as I did when I was talking to him. You have no idea. He could be 16 years old. Mm -hmm. He could be 80. He could be, you don't know. It's just he just took someone's picture. Has that soaked in? Yeah. That's probably why he didn't want me to come on the show. Yeah. Now, not long ago, another mother and daughter sat right here and learned the same truth. Here's what happened with Sabrina and Sarah. I met James on Match. James asked me for money three weeks after we met. The total amount of money that I've sent James Connor is around 265000 Is he worth it? Yes. My mom missed so many red flags about this guy. My mom gave away her retirement and everything she has, all for a Photoshop person. We actually did some investigation on this passport. If you look closely, there's a woman in the background. Is that him calling you right now? Yes, it's him. Well, let me talk to you. Yeah. You are a scumbag scam artist, and we know who you are, and we know where you are, and we're going to, by God, find you, and you're going to give this lady her money back. What do you think of that? Look me in the eye and tell me you know this was a scam. I truly believe that this. It's a scam. Well, joining us now via Polycom is Sarah, Sabrina's daughter, who you just saw. Sarah, so good to talk to you again. Thanks, Dr. Phil. Uh, you've been watching the show so far, right? I, it breaks my heart. Yeah. I feel like I'm reliving everything, which we still are living through everything. Uh, my mom... Uh, she actually just moved in with me and my husband yesterday. She is still going through every up and down daily. Um, she actually referred to it as a death when she found out that James wasn't real on the show. I think that Norma is, is in love with the voice still, just like my mom. It doesn't matter if... The, she just found out that he's not real because it's not just the picture that she's in love with. It's the voice. It's the addiction. It's like somebody that's on a drug. Thank you so much for saying that. When she was saying that, you were shaking your head yes. If this Richard called you and said, okay, I, it's true. I, I've never been in North Carolina. I've never been in Philadelphia. I've never been out of Ghana. But I really do love you. What would your reaction be? I love you too. Wow! <laughs> this man that has cheated you and lied to you and taken all of your money and, and played you just as an ATM, just for cash, if he said, Okay, you caught me. I, I, I live in Ghana, and, uh, but I really do love you. You would say I love you, too. I just do love him. I love him what I think he is and what, he told, what he's letting me see that he, you know, what I think he is. But you're loving who you wish he was. That doesn't exist. You just talked to the picture. Bill just talked to you on the phone. He, he's not that guy. It's, it's some guy in Ghana. 
Yeah, that's the guy I'm in love with. Wow. What you said, sir, was so prophetic because that's exactly, you're... It's so sad, it makes me want to cry. I, if I could talk to her, Dr. Phil, give her my phone number. I could probably help more. My mom and I should talk. Thank you for Dr. being here and being part of this. And, um, with, with your permission, I am going to give your contact information to Norma and Tammy so you guys can talk. So that way you, you can it, be support. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Twitter fans, earlier I asked the following question. Would you ever send money to someone you're dating online but have never met? Here's what you had to say. The results were 90% no and 10% yes. And, uh, you know, actually, you're not alone in this because the FBI, this happens enough now that they have statistics. The amount of money that is flowing out of this country to the scam artist is $82 million a year. All right, let's switch gears to a past guest whose husband had several lovers, and two of them came with the wife to expose him. What happened to Anna and her husband, Pablo? I'm going to tell you about that when we come back. Do you get that this man is not real? All the things you wish he felt for you, she feels for you right now. Look at her face. Yeah, but he told me, he would tell me that the, she didn't care for me. She just cared for her family. That she didn't need me. Look to your right. Who's here? Tammy. Look to your left. Do you see him? Uh. The girl that cares for her mother is sitting right beside you. Don't look past what you need when it's right in front of you. Now, before we go, a few months ago, I met Pablo and Anna, a young married couple. You might remember Anna brought along some surprise guests for Pablo, some women he was cheating with. He had no idea that she had found them, and they had formed a relationship of their own. Take a look. Pablo and I have been married for three years. I found out that Pablo was cheating on me. He told me that he will end the relationship with that woman and will start working on our marriage. Are you prepared to be honest today? Yes. Pablo says that he only had one affair during his marriage to Anna. For every rat you see, there are 50 you don't. I decided to look through his phone. And I learned there was a number he'd been texting. She admitted that they had sex. Have you lied to me since you've been out here? Well, just that, well, since it came into light, yes. Is there anything else? <laughs> Amanda's here. Fantastic. Amanda, come on in. Wonder how many more chairs you could fit over there. How many more chairs do we need? <laughs> Who is Bernice? It's another woman that I'm seeing. Did he ask you to marry him? He sure did. And he asked you to marry him with her ring? Yes. Who is Alina? <laughs> These two actually got together and they decided to become Alina. Anna and I made a fake profile on the dating website so we could catch Pablo with other women. Pablo started messaging us actually the next day. Why do you need to lie to every woman you encounter? We got to either be honest. I don't know. Well, there's been a dramatic change since their last appearance on the show. Take a look. Since I was on the show, I tried really hard to give another chance for my marriage. Unfortunately, Pablo showed very little effort in changing his lifestyle, so I filed for the divorce. It was one of the hardest and most painful choices I had to make in my life. I know the healing process will take some time. I believe I will overcome all obstacles and find a better direction for my life, a direction where I will be happy. I'm guessing Pablo declined our request uh, to make a comment. Uh, I'd like to thank all of my guests today. 
Our prayers are with you, and we really hope that this uh, starts a new phase in your life. We'll see you next time. Thank you.